This is the second part of the restoration project of the FR-4-U frequency counter. It has been manufactured around the year 50s, so quite a long time ago. As we have seen in the previous videos that uh, it's missing something in the unit, it's missing a junction box that connect the power supply from this unit to all the sub chassis. By the way, we should be able to uh, find a way to connect those, hopefully. Uh, we have also seen in the previous video that is missing one uh, cap here that should be exactly that like that. Uh, it's a can cap. Need some uh, care, uh, cleaning, remove the vacuum tubes, check those, clean the uh, switch and check the fuse and so forth. So let's go ahead with the uh, restoration. I'm starting to approach a dangerous task, the repair of such uh, power supply and old instruments designed around the year 50s are very dangerous and are involved with high voltages that can be lethal. So if you are not familiar with that, please uh, don't do that. And if you are going to work on those, you are doing at your own risk. So that's it. Let's go ahead with the power supply repair. The tubes match perfectly what it has been labeled on. So seems fine, at least that. This is the bottom of the power supply. And I have noted that we have a, a power supply selection switch that we just uh, need to uh, move from this point to the other one and we will have 230. I have here the facility of 110 volts so I probably will leave uh, like that since I want to keep the original but actually this plug should have the ground plug which i am not seeing so i think that uh, must be replaced both these the plug and the power cord uh, which is uh, very crusty and doesn't have the ground uh, the ground strip the ground wire yeah this have to go safety first I already have sprayed a bit the bottom with uh, WD-40. And here we have another interesting uh, component. This is a diode and it's a high voltage diode. And it is uh, the purpose of this diode is to rectify the 700 and minus 720 volt use it to supply the uh, scope of the instrument so let's go ahead with the cleaning i will test these resistors i will cut out this uh, capacitor and the other one that we have seen in the previous video that is broken uh, and remain only half of it so let's do that and see how we can proceed. I have removed all the fuse holder caps. None of the fuse are there. Two are spared, but two of them should be the, the protection fuses. And, and I was not expecting to find them since uh, the input capacitor uh, capacitor is blowing out yeah let's go heavy cleaning i have done good progress here 
All the capacitors are replaced, including the minus 750 volts input capacitor, power cord, and plug. So, new uh, fuses. Input transformer, it's, it looks pretty fine. I measure it, no leakages, so it should be fine. Uh, I am not able to measure this diode, and seems that high voltage uh, diodes, uh, rectifying diodes like that, I've also phased it in the past. It seems that uh, they don't measure nothing uh, with any kind of uh, instrument, uh, at least in my knowledge. Uh, however, they should it should be able to uh, rectify the minus voltage. Otherwise, I will replace with a uh, suitable diode. So, resistors are fine. We can go ahead with the testing. In order to perform the power supply test, I need to mimic the interlock line daisy chain which simply uh, interrupt a ground line if any of the module inside the, the instrument is missing. So what I will do, I will put a ground lead. I will place only this diode. I will check this voltage that should be probably a bit lower since I'm loading with 220K uh, resistor, which I believe is a bit high for this uh, 2.7 milliamp. But I wanna check the diode if uh, it's good enough. Uh, as we can see here, we have an elevated uh, uh, secondary filament supply. Here there is a missing line but actually it's just a cross there are no connection between these two lines so it, this is simply the line that goes to ground this is simply the line that goes to the filament which i believe is the scope filament so let's uh, make this this setup and check it okay so we have the 220k relevant to ground the ground strip or uh, jumper wire to the transformer and yeah simply the meter so let's uh, try to power it up and as we can see we are having minus 675 volts which is pretty fine to me so it seems that we have a good uh, uh, Scope negative voltage. Let's try without any load. And indeed it goes to over 800. So, seems that uh, everything is fine so far. Clearly no vacuum tubes installed. Still, I have to check those. Okay, let's try 6Y6. Okay. Minimum value is 30. Hmm, that is a weird behavior. Yeah, but seems uh, still in the range. 5Y3. Second diet, 60, minimum value 40, so it's okay. Same for the first. That's fine. Now, 0E2 is also good. I want to check the voltages are coming out from the regulated plus 155 and the plus 250. But I'm going to uh, power it on with Variac. So let me plug in. So, I'm now at pin 8 of the tube, so 
we are measuring right here. I've placed it at 90 volt, so we should uh, wait a bit for filament and vacuum tubes warming up. Nothing so far. Okay, it's coming up. It's coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And indeed, yet at 90 volt, we are almost at the regulated voltage. I will increase a bit more. Yeah, it's going over. So, oh, clearly we are without any load. So, yeah, that could be the cause. Uh, so let me switch off and move this onto, uh, let's say, pin 4 of the shock here. Okay, we already have seen voltage, so power it down again. And we should measure around 250 volts. I have increased it. Okay, so we are measuring 250 volt here. Let's see the regulated. Okay. 170. Well, it seems a bit high. We will check later on with all the loads if uh, the uh, supplies are working as expected. By the way, it seems to have a working power supply. And this is a good uh, starting point. Well, we have a working power supply, so that is a very good uh, step ahead. The next step is to find a way to plug this power supply to the sub chassis one by one. And I think I find the solution. Uh, actually, I'm very sure. Look at this. Look at that. Write those. And this is exactly what we need on the other sub chassis. Well, when I was looking at this plug, I felt familiar. And indeed, this is an extension wire that I've done for receivers Collins R390. This is the extender for the audio section of uh, Collins R390. So what I've done, I've placed an order for a, an original extension cord that I've been able to find. So I will use this two uh, sockets to make the test uh, one by one on the uh, unit. And I also have a, found a source for those. And I think I will receive in the next, uh, let's say, five or six weeks hopefully before. So I think uh, I have a good starting point. And yes, this uh, clearly will uh, give me the chance to don't have to design something that uh, uh, allow me to connect the units. So let me bring the next one. So this is the sub chassis that I want to fix uh, after this one. Clearly the plug is fitting perfectly. So yeah, just need to uh, every time re rewire properly for the connection as uh, 
we have uh, on the connection chart so in the next video we we'll start to make cleaning preliminary testing and see if uh, we can have some live sign in these components so thank you very much for watching and see you very soon